morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> welcome. This says welcome to First Baptist Church of Morrisville for the last time and welcome to Compass Fellowship Baptist Church for the first time. So glad that you are here with us this morning. Um, so glad that we're able to worship together. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to worship. Please stand and sing with us. Please stand. Yeah. Shall 
I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of His blood. Amen. Please be seated. Morning again. <laughs> Welcome again to Compass Fellowship Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're here again this morning. Just have a couple announcements for you. Um, so if we can get through some slides here. Step back here. All right. So uh, with launching... Our new name, our rebrand here, we are also relaunching all our ministries at our church this Sunday. So very busy, very exciting time for us this Sunday. So life groups are an opportunity for you throughout the week to join with other believers, other folks from our, our church community. Um, a lot of them are in homes. So there's a full list here. You can also go to our new website. It's www.cfbc.me. And you can go to the backslash life groups if you'd like to join a life group. And there's all the registrations are available for you there online. We're just going to scroll through those. You can also take a look at the announcements after the service. They're scrolling on the TVs outside um, in the, the hallways there. So feel free to take a look at that. There's opportunities for everyone, uh, different ages, different walks of life. So next slide. Almost there. Uh, the next thing that we wanted to talk about is coming up. That's my slide. Join my life group, family life group. Um, parking. We want to talk a little bit about parking. So um, as we are continuing to open up all our, our services and all of our programs, um, we want to make sure that seniors 
and uh, those who are guests get kind of the prime real estate with parking. We don't want our senior citizens to have to be walking across the street from the gravel lot, right? So uh, there's the prime real estate spots, if you're not sure where they are, they're in the back of the building, right? And you come right in the back door, that's like the secret entrance. So that is where ideally our seniors and our guests are parking. And so if you feel like you are capable of walking a little bit farther, there's three other options for you. So Garlet's lot next door is available to us on Sunday mornings. The lot across the street, the gravel lot, you can park in, and then across the street as well um, in the municipal lot or the borough parking lot, you can uh, y make use of that as well. Next slide. Sunday mornings, we are also kicking off our family ministries this morning. So like I said, very busy time. Um, so nursery is going to be provided during both services. So that's infant to two years. Uh, during the 9 a.m. service, after our kind of like greeting and fellowship time, we send kids out for kids praise, which is a, a revamped kind of cooler version of, uh, of children's church. And then during the 11 o'clock service, we have uh, Sunday school classes available for all ages. And that's, ne next slide will kind of outline that for you. Thank you. Um, so three years, three through second grade is gonna be um, one class, and then third grade through fifth grade is another class. And then sixth grade and up, basically, you've got two options. So you can either stay for the, um, the, the Sunday school class in the fellowship hall, or you can join a ministry, and there's plenty of things for you to do. Um, so sixth grade and up, if you are looking for something to do during second service, we'd encourage you to either join Hal's Sunday school class in the fellowship hall uh, with all the, the other adults and everyone, or find a ministry that you could get connected in. There's plenty of things. You can talk to Sean Lees if you're interested in that, that ministry opportunity. And the last thing that I really want to talk through is student ministries. So we're kicking off our student ministries as well. So next week is our fall kickoff for student ministries. That's the 25th. That's Saturday. We're going to do a fall festival, and it's a big party. So uh, we're going to start at 3 o'clock. We're going to take the kids over to Steyer Orchard. We're going to do some apple picking, and then we're going to come back. We'll have a bonfire, and we'll have hot dogs and some hot apple cider and things like that, so uh, it'll be a good time. So definitely, if you're sixth grade and through twelfth grade, we would love to have you come out for that fall kickoff of our youth ministry, Solid Rock Youth Center, all of those things um, on Saturday, September 25th. Also, Awana is changing a little bit this year, so Awana is going to be at a different time. It's going to be Mondays from 3.45 to 5 p.m. So if you've got a kid that's uh, age three through fifth grade, it's going to be a great opportunity for you to have them come right after school and do an Awana program. So it'll, it'll kind of sub as an after school program. Um, it'll also be an opportunity for the, the students that are in our daycare to also participate in that Awana program. So great opportunity. Um, if you live locally as well, the daycare sends the bus over to pick up kids. So your kids can get picked up right from, right from school. And I think that's it for me, right? Oh, Breeze check-in. Just wanted to talk briefly about that. We are adopting a new check-in system, so just show us grace as we continue to learn how to uh, check you all in. This is going to be an opportunity for us to make sure your kids are safe, so uh, we are asking that parents would drop their kids off directly in that back family wing and then pick them up again. Uh, that's the key thing. They're used to their kids just getting released, uh, but we want to make sure that our kids are safe and they're getting released to the right people. So if you could go back and pick them up after the service, that would be phenomenal. Thank you so much. Tell us if they want, uh, they don't like their kid, they want a different one, they can't pick them up. Oh, okay. And I'll have you know that I've been preaching, I've been uh, parked in the back here at the municipal parking lot for, for, for years now. And my nickname at home from Joshua is Superman, and I can still leap with a single bound over that wall back there to get up on the parking lot. So, uh, and Mayor, we do support, we do su submit a co-insurance uh, rider to the borough covering that uh, lot. So uh, we're all good. So they allow us to do that. That's been for years. We've been able to do that. I just want to, um, before I um, go to the main reason I'm up here, I want to just mention Zach's put tons of work into this. We should thank him. He's been spending ages and ages trying to get this all together. And uh, he deserves a lot of credit. Was here at 1230 on last, uh, the other night. And, uh, you know, 
Um, so at any rate, the elders also on the team have done a lot of work for a year trying to plan this thing, trying to make sure everything goes well, trying to get our new name uh, registered and make sure that we have uh, what the church wants. And frankly, it's not the name that I thought we were going to, I would have liked to see in the beginning, but uh, hey, it's the best one we have and we're all, we're all excited about it. Um, Dan and Rob, Dan Marquardt and Rob um, Helsley did a lot of the work on the thing, uh, the church. Uh, they're getting paid for it somewhat, but they're giving a lot of donating a lot of hours also. So thanks to them for doing all their work. Um, we appreciate that. The Birkins are responsible for your meal this afternoon as far as cooking, so uh, April and Pete, so thank them. They all also were responsible for the TVs that we have here, putting those up for the, um, uh, for the um, announcements, the scrolling announcements, so we can take care of that. Uh, the, Mayor, you're welcome to check the work. He's an electrician, so he can make sure that everything's going okay. Um, then uh, Carissa is the fellowship committee. She's been doing a lot of work to try to make sure everything goes well this afternoon, so uh, make sure the tables are set up, and when you go out there, that's all her. Uh, of course, she was a staff sergeant in the Army, so she's got everybody working properly and uh, making sure they do the right job. Right, Sean? She's that at home, too. <laughs> okay. Um, Abby G and Jake and um, Joshua all help move all these chairs and tables over here for today's thing. We do need to get them back, so if anybody wants to help afterwards load them back on the trail, that would be nice. And then, of course, Jim and the worship team, so we're, we're thankful for all of that. Uh, so, um, anyway, um, Mayor Ravel, would you like to come up here? I think he's got a special proclamation for us today from the town, and we're so excited about that. And so. Uh, uh, we'll let you read that. Uh, I think the lighting is okay, so you can actually see, see it. I'm, I have trouble. I got to make sure we got plenty of light, or I can't see what we're doing here. And I'm going to ask uh, Sean and Pastor Rob and Pastor Ken. Is Ken Brothers out there someplace? He may be out there. They probably got him set up tables. Uh, come on up, guys, if you would, please. Um, and so, I'm going to let you uh, read this proclamation to us from the mayor of Marsville. Give him a good round of applause here. And I can see it. I was worried that with my eyes, and I forgot my glasses, that I was going to have to, <laughs> I was going to have to just kind of fake it. But I think, I think I can actually pull this off. Okay. So I am honored to be here to be invited from from Pastor Taylor, and uh, we talked about it the other day. And then I, I had this idea. Of course, that means more work for my wife. <laughs> I said, you know, we need to do a proclamation because this is really a special event. This isn't just something an ordinary Sunday uh, for me so thank you Jim. yeah so so since I am retiring I could say Janet's S Saturday was spent working on this <laughs> okay. so so I'm like I said I am very honored and, and proud to read this it's a proclamation regarding the First Baptist Church the, uh, the grand reopening is the Compass Fellowship Baptist Church Whereas the First Baptist Church of Morrisville originally brought people together as passionate followers of Christ with a permanent fellowship of, with work, a workshop in 1909, which has been 112 years, a positive cornerstone in Morrisville Borough. And whereas under the examples and guidance of Pastor Gary Taylor since 1989, the First Baptist Church of Morrisville has continually grown its vision to improve and enrich the church family and whereas in sharing blessings with all the first church of Morrisville continues its strong community enrichment as members of the Morrisville Business Association the Morrisville Community Coalition partner in community events such as the Morrisville Memorial Day Parade the Morrisville Labor Day picnic and by helping our community to thrive by giving our youth positive direction throughout Solid Rock Youth Center the We Care 2 Daycare, Early Learning Center, and Mega Sports Camp. And whereas we continue together in these extraordinary surroundings to praise our Lord and receive guidance, and this is my favorite part here. <laughs> now, therefore, it is reclaimed on this 19th day of September 2021, the Borough of Morrisville recognizes the First Baptist Church of Morrisville, PA, grand reopening and proclaims that annually, the 19th of September will be known as the Compass Fellowship Baptist Day. So, congratulations to everyone. I got to uh, stay up here for a second. Dave. We got? Do we get pictures enough? Uh, you guys want to uh, take a picture? Uh, 
we're, um, we're glad that uh, the, you've been able to do this. I will say that uh, uh, Mayor Ravella has been very supportive of our church throughout the years. Uh, the years that he's been on, hey, I, I've, I've talked to him on numerous occasions. We've gone down and participated always in the Memorial Day picnic. Usually after the Memorial Day picnic, Josh and I wind up sitting across from him, having hot dogs up here at the, at the Capitol uh, Fire Company. And uh, Janet also, both of them, they, uh, they see us. They were down here when we had our, um, our um, uh, set up at the mayor's picnic down here. They both stopped by, said hello. And I mean, they're just, they've always been supportive of our fellowship here at the, at the church. And we've tried to also be supportive of the town. And so we thank you for the good relationship we've had for, for, uh, with uh, Mayor Vela and with uh, Janet. And uh, sorry to see you uh, leave that post, but uh, you know, I'll have to find somebody to do to put my thumb on and say, can we, can we, can we do something together? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I haven't had to do that. You've been, you've been um, amazing to us. So thank you so much. We yeah. appreciate that. God bless you and Janet both. of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty, from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as, as we, we humbly, humbly proclaim. Source to its light, and it conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. Oh, none can fathom, undescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, and you know them by. We fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. Unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, All right, please greet one another.
you have a seat if you would please. Grab your seats. Um, I did miss a couple of people. I had it on my note here. I missed um, Sean Ratty. He put a lot of work into redoing all these wirings back here, getting the stuff going on. Um, you know, we always think of the tech team when something goes wrong, right? But uh, he's done a lot of work. Hopefully, our, our, even our online uh, presence is better. Uh, he's done some upgrades there. So thank you, Sean. And uh, if you're online, we uh, hope that you'll type at the bottom that you're there. But we hope next week you'll join us, uh, for sure. And then also, um, I, I mentioned Chris earlier for the fellowship, but I forgot to tell you that uh, take a look at this um, history board out here, just as you walk down the hallway to your left to the fellowship hall. It's brand new. It, it, it oversees a uh, overlooks a bunch of our history. Mary Fallon, with some help with Ron, from Ron, her husband, and also Carissa, did all that work out there, trying to research those things, get the photos, put them up, and everything else. So uh, thank you to them also for their part in that. So uh, the sermon today, uh, um, I thought it was a very special Sunday. So we're going to have three preachers today. So um, we should be out of here by, let's see, 11, 12, 31, about 1 o'clock or so, maybe. Uh, no, Pastor Rob's preaching, maybe 1.30. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad we could joke around to Pastor Rob. <laughs> yeah, he's a, we love him coming down from Brooklyn to preach to us once a month, and we really appreciate him. He's involved with SCORE, which is, a, uh, which is an outreach that uses um, um, sports as a way in which to uh, uh, get into people, um, and especially young people's lives. So um, Pastor Ken's going to start us off. He's coming up here getting get us set up, and uh, he's going to start us off, and then I'm going to go, and then uh, Pastor Rob. And we're going to walk us through the purpose of our church. We might be changing our name or getting a, a next, another name we're going to be using, um, and you've seen a lot of changes around here uh, trying to upgrade, make our facility more attractive to people in the community. And uh, But, you know, we're going to still stand on God's word. We're not changing anything there. And so we want to go back over our purpose and just share with you, as well as the folks there in Facebook land, uh, what the purpose of our church is. And Pastor Ken's going to start off with one of the most important things of all. So go ahead, Pastor Ken. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Okay. First of all, I'd like to read a scripture. First John 5, 9 to 13. Am I back on? Oh, yeah. 1 John 5, 9 through 13. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this, that he has testified concerning his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made God a liar because he has not believed in a testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, know that you have eternal life. I'd like to tell you a story. When I was working for a tree company, uh, we did line clearance work, and we're working up by the Burlton Bristol Bridge, and we had the bucket trucks out there on, out on the street. And we took the bucket trucks and put them nose first to trim these trees. And I was standing in between the two trucks, and I was talking to a fella and telling him about the Lord Jesus Christ and how to go to heaven. He come right out flat and told me, I don't want this Jesus that you're talking about. I didn't know it at the time, but behind me was a fella standing there, and he said, I want this Jesus that you're talking about. Amen? Amen. So what I'm saying today is, is that when you leave here today, that you know that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and that you're going to heaven. So may I ask you a question? Can I? Yes. All right. One ever taken a Bible and showed you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. The Bible contains both good news and bad news. The bad news is something about you and it's something about me. The good news is something about God. So let's 
take a look at the bad news. Bad news number one, we are sinners. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin means that we have missed the mark. When we lie, when we hate, we steal, we gossip, we have missed the standard God has set. Suppose you and I were to each throw a rock to try to hit the North Pole. You might throw it further than I, but neither of us, neither of us would hit it, would we? When the Bible says all have sinned and fall short, it means that we have all come short of God's standard of action. In thoughts, words, and actions, we have not been perfect, have we? But the bad news gets worse. Is number one. The punishment for sin is death. I'll say it again. Bad news number two, the punishment for sin is death. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Suppose you work for me and I gave you five bucks. That's what I paid you. That five dollars was your wages. That's what you earned. The Bible says that by sinning, we have earned death. That means we deserve to die and be separated from God forever. But since there's no way we could come to God, the Bible says that God came to us. So the good news that Christ died for you, and he died for me. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and while that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Suppose you're in a hospital dying of cancer. I come up to you and say, let's take the cancer cells from your body and put them into my body. If that were possible, what would happen to me? What would happen to you? I would die and you would live. I would die in your place. The Bible says Christ took the punishment and we deserve for sin, placed it upon himself and died in our place. Three days later, he came back to life to prove that sin and death have been conquered and that he claims to be God who he truly is. Just as the bad news got worse, the good news even gets better. Amen for that. Good news number two, you can be saved through faith in Christ. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Bible says, For by grace you have been saved by faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Faith means what must you, trust, you must trust Christ for. You must depend on him alone to forgive you and to give you eternal life. Just as you trust a chair to hold you th through no effort of your own, so you must trust Jesus to get to heaven through no effort of your own. But you might say, I go to church. I don't do anything really bad. I'm a good person. I help the poor. And I'm very religious. These are all good, but the but good living, going to church, helping the poor, or either, either good things you might do cannot get you to heaven. You must trust in Jesus Christ alone, and God will give you eternal life as a gift. Does that make sense to you? Is there anything keeping you right now from trusting in Jesus Christ? Go down through the checklist and mark them off if there's anything. Think carefully. There's nothing more important that you need to trust Christ. That's the most important thing that you can do ever in your life is to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Would you like to tell God you're trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you would, why not pray and tell God you're trusting his Son? Let's bow our heads. It's not a prayer that saves you. It is trusting Jesus Christ that saves you. Prayer is simply 
how you tell God you're trusting in his son. If you'd like to receive Jesus Christ today as your savior, just say this simple prayer. And then what I would like you to do is just tell someone, tell someone that you received Jesus as your savior. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know my sin deserves to be punished. I believe Christ died for me and rose from the grave. I trust Jesus Christ as alone as my savior. Thank you for the forgiveness and everlasting life I now have in Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, amen. What just happened? In John 5, 24, it says, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent him has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Amen. It sounds like a game show this morning because we're going to use two game show illustrations, but how many of you ever played Monopoly? Okay. I love Monopoly. Okay? It'll take a little long to play, but uh, tell me the rest of this phrase. Do not pass. Do not. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That's what Pastor Ken's message is about. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, whatever, Methodist, whatever else you want to throw in there. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, do not pass go, do not collect $200. That is the most critical thing that of all. Your, where you go to church may matter some, but what matters only to God is what have you done with Jesus? Have you accepted him as your personal savior? There's a verse I love, a couple of verses in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. It says, uh, he who has the son has, he who does not have the son of God does not have it's that easy. It's black and white. Nobody has to guess if you're going to heaven. Got the son, got life. Don't got the son, don't got life. That's it. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior? The Bible says that all of our good things are as filthy rags in God's sight. It's like one of our daycare uh, you know, children coming up and holding up their dirty diaper saying, I'm helping, you know, and we're saying, no, not quite. Uh, but that's what God says about our good works. Until we know Jesus, all the good works we do are like dirty, uh, dirty diapers in God's sight. We've got to get that straight. And the rest of that verse that I just quoted to you says, these things I have written that you may know that you have eternal life. I was down at your mayor's picnic down there and talked to a lot of people down there. And, and I'd like to ask that question, you know, uh, are you going to heaven? And the most frequent answer I get is, well, I'm trying, or I'm pretty good, or I hope so, or I'm hoping my good works bounce on my back. All of those are not God's answers. It's not what God wants to hear. God wants to hear, what have you done with my son, Jesus Christ? It's black and white, if I can use those two colors as a, maybe the opposites of the illustration, you know? Either you've got the son or you don't. And so that's the starting point. But beyond that, there is a place we go. We need to keep on going on. Let's go to another game show. How many people remember the show, um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Anybody remember that song? Okay. And if you, if you answer the questions and you get three, if you get stuck on an answer, you get three choices. What, does anybody remember what any of those choices were? 50-50, okay. Or call, the, call, the, call the audience, pull the audience. What's else? Call a friend, right. Yeah, and then wasn't one of them like knock out the, the, one of the wrong answers? You know, so you, so you have four answers, so they knock out one. You say, okay, now they only have three choices. So the Bible says that the Satan is the god of this world. He's the one that most people are under the control of, even whether they know it or not. And so consequently, when people go through life, uh, they've got a choice, you know? You can call a friend, but who's the person who doesn't have friends in the church going to call? They're going to call someone who's going to give them a bad answer. When they say, let's ask the audience. And they ask their audience, where are they going to ask it at? The local bar? The people at work? The friends at school? Let me tell you, when you pull those kind of people and you say, give me your poll for the right answer, what are you going to get? The wrong answer, you know? They're going to knock out the, 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 the answer, find Jesus Christ. Or call your pastor 
or go to church or find a friend who knows, who knows God, those are not going to be the answers that they'll keep. They're going to knock out those answers. Or then you, go, then, then you might wind up going to the one where um, you, you wind up uh, knock out the, the wrong answer. Well, what answer are they going to knock out? They're going to knock out the same answers that the audience is going to knock out. So I tell you that for us, and for those of you on Facebook and anybody here, you need to be established in a church which preaches God's word. And if your church tells you, try to be good, try to be kind to others, and that's the way to get to heaven, you need to find another church. Because you need a church that preach, preaches the word of God and says, there's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me or except through me. It's Jesus Christ which gives us the right answer. And so we need to build ourselves up. So beyond, beyond knowing Jesus Christ, there's a, we, our second thing, our second purpose is to build saints. If you go to the next slide, we'll, we'll go through a couple of these slides here. There's, a, there's four verses in the Bible. I'm just going to bring out there's a lot more probably. But Matthew 20, 19, and 20 is the, one of those verses which we, we often go to for evangelism. Go you go into, the world, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But then it says teaching them to obey, obey. Once you know Jesus, then you need to respond to his word. And the only way to respond to his word is to know his word, yes, and obey it. 2 Timothy 2.15, we talked about Awana. That's our Awana verse, and many of you can say that. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, accurately interpreting or rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to study God's word. You need to be in church on Sunday morning. You need to maybe go to a life group we're having. You need to read the word during the week. You know, there's many ways. In fact, all those ways you should be doing in order to try to be edified or built up as a saint. First, First Peter 3.15 says, always be ready to give a defense for your hope or for your faith. If someone asks you a question about, from the, about religion or faith, can you defend it from the Bible? I hope so. If not, that's why we have Sunday mornings. That's why we have life groups. That's why you read the Bible on your own. And I'm going to encourage you. That word defense, do you know what the word is in Greek? Apologia. What's that sound like? Apologetics, yeah. Are you willing and able to give an apologetic, not an apology, I'm sorry I believe this, but an, a, a defense, an apologetic for what you believe? That's what the scriptures tell us to do for your hope. And we do that by building up the saints, edifying the bodies, learning God's word. And then the last one is a, uh, Hebrews 10.25, and this was written, and we're going to be going through the book of Hebrews, so we'll get, eventually get to this verse, but it, it's such an important one. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as has become the habit of some. And then it says, even so as you see the day of the Lord approaching. As we get closer and closer to the things that are going wrong in our society, we say, Boy, this is the end of the world. <laughs> you know, it's coming along. And some of us, we look at it. We think of all the stuff that's going on in there. We think of, the, you know, the border and COVID people coming in and, and, and the Delta variant and Afghanistan and people trapped over there and, losing, and you know, soldiers getting killed. And we think of uh, uh, BLM and all the, all the issues we have today. And we think, where's the world going? But you know what? Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together because this is where we come. We, I, I mentioned that, who wants to be a millionaire? If you're a believer and you have to pull the audience, what audience are you going to pull? Us. We are the body of Christ. We can give you a right answer as we talk to each other. If you're going to call a friend, who are you going to call? Hopefully someone that you're sitting next to today or someone that you know, and I invite you again, you and Facebook, to come on back, be a part of the church. You know, a lot of us have gotten unfortunately lazy during this last year and a half, you know? Isn't it nice to be able to sit home and, and watch TV and say, I'm going to church uh, in your slippers and your bathrobe? That's nice. But that's, you know, you're watching a church service. You are not going to church. The church is who? I am. We are the church. If you're not here or at some other local body that is preaching the word of God, you're not a church. Come to church. Don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. And, and you will get the direction in life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, 
and he will direct your paths. As we espouse, publicize our new name, Compass, guess what? It's he who will direct our paths. And we want to be the compass to Morrisville to say, this is how to come to Jesus. Not to do everything that's good in town first, but know Jesus and then move on. In the first four, uh, couple of verses, uh, if you go to the next slide here, I'm going to read the first couple of verses here of, uh, of Hebrews and not, not all of it. Um, we're going to be studying Hebrews over the next um, months, uh, probably from now to Christmas and then after Christmas probably even for a few months. This is what it begins with. It says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets, right here, the Old Testament, in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And he is the exact representation of his nature. There are some churches that don't, if you can call them churches, don't recognize Jesus Christ as being God. But I'll tell you, Hebrews right here, I mean, the exact representation of his nature. When you look at, you know, when you look at Jesus, you see God because he is God. And we need to learn this. And, and Hebrews is rich with all kinds of stuff in it. It shows how, you know, he's better than this, he's better than this, better than that. I, it, the whole section, we haven't preached on it in 20 years here. So let's go back and do a great review and look at the book of Hebrews and see what it has to say for us. Go on to one more slide here. I just want to show you one. Who is this Jesus? That's what we're going to study. In Hebrews, we find that he is a guide or a compass to those who are on the fence. It's written to the Jews, basically, back in that day, many of them who were on the fence. Is Jesus the Messiah? Is he the Messiah? I don't know. They're on the fence. And so Hebrews is a, a book to show you, get off the fence. Take Jesus, because he is the one who will get you right with God. And so it's to get people off the fence. For who's us who are believers, it's going to help us understand who Jesus is. And it's going to give us a great exposition of, of who he is and help us to appreciate who Jesus is more. And then Hebrews will also help us to know Jesus. I love this next phrase that I have down here. We'll get to it probably about 10 weeks into our series. Hebrews chapter 12, maybe 14 weeks into our series. Hebrews 12 to fixing our eyes on Jesus. My son, as many of you know, is incapacitated, um, was in college. And this, ver this, this section is very important to me because in the front of Jonathan's Bible, which he took, which he got from us at the church and took with him to, to college, in the very front cover it says one phrase three times. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. That's the key. And I hope Jonathan, although he can't communicate, is still fixing his eyes on Jesus. How 15 years later you would endure what he's done, I don't know, without Jesus. But fix our eyes on Jesus. That was, that's what Hebrews is all about. Next slide, guys. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. We need to be able to know Jesus, and that's what Hebrews will help us do over the next bunch of weeks as we look at God's Word. So we hope you'll all join us. Come back. And those on Facebook, we hope you all join us. Continue to join us on Facebook, 9 and 9 o'clock in the morning, and then later on on our, our website. And if uh, possible, and you live within, we hope you on Facebook will come in and sit in here with God's people, with his body next week. Pastor Rob's going to come up and take us through our next, our third purpose, and take us to the close here. Go ahead, Pastor Rob. Praise God. Isn't this great today? I woke up this morning, and I, since then I've been praising God. I looked at my wife. Praise God. She's beautiful. I got out of bed, went outside, beautiful day. Praise God, it's a beautiful day. We drove here from Brooklyn, New York. Praise God, we're here at in Morrisville to worship here, a church where our focus is on winning souls. And thank you, Pastor Ken, for that great message, that uh, great reminder that God, God is not willing that any would perish, right, but that everybody would embrace him and be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And praise God for... Um, Pastor Gary's message. Praise God for the mayor being here. I didn't know the mayor was going to be here today. But praise God for seeing so many of you that I haven't seen since uh, COVID um, shut us down. Then we reopened one service, right? One service uh, a Sunday. And now, praise God, we're back to two services, Sunday school. I can't wait to hear the kids praising God again. And I can't wait. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but uh, we'll, we'll try to come more often than just when I preach because I want to go to Hal Sunday school class. 
And uh, I also want to hear the kids when they sing. And I wish I could be in the life groups too. Praise God. We have so much to praise God for. And that's because we have the blessed hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dwelling within us through the Holy Spirit. And, and life is good, right? Life is good because we're in Christ and Christ is in us. So I have the great, um, just the great joy of talking about as a church, we praise God. And it feels, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you were in pain? Maybe it was a toothache. Maybe it was much more serious than a toothache. But that type of pain, which just doesn't go away, medicine does not help. Uh, therapy doesn't help. It's a pain you're living with. Some people with spinal cord injuries. I had migraine, severe migraine headaches for a while in my life, and nothing took that migraine away. I was at the point where I'd say, Jeannie, cut off my head, and then maybe it won't hurt anymore, um, tongue-in-cheek. But I found what worked, what helped me during that time was praising God. Now, it hurt to think. If you ever have a migraine and you try to plan out, like, how am I going to get my work done? Some of you are shaking your heads, right? Just to try to think it hurts. So I learned how to meditate. And biblical meditation is when we think about something that is true about God, something from the Word of God that is true. Like Pastor Gary was sharing this morning, like Pastor Ken was sharing, something you just take that phrase and you repeat it again and again and again. God is good all the time. You, I praise you, Lord. Jesus is alive. Whatever it is, something true from God's word. And as I would meditate on it, slowly I would be able to fall asleep. And for me, that was the only cure for a migraine. I had to be in darkness. I had to have pressure on my head. And I had to sleep. And um, that's a beautiful way. So praise God when things are great. When you're like had your second cup of coffee and like everything's going great. You're like fired up. Praise God when you have that migraine. Praise God when you have that pain. Praising God is so wonderful because God is real. And that's what I have the blessing of uh, speaking about here this morning. So what would, listen to the story, and then we're going to go to Scripture, and I'm going to finish up real quick. But here's a question. What would make a group of four young men in the middle of a torrential downpour deep in Big Bad Luck Swamp in the region of the Adirondack Forest praise God together out of pure joy? On a cold, bleak expedition to Big Bad Luck Swamp, a group of four young men back in 1978 praised God with all of their hearts. It was a cold, bleak day. What made them praise God? Did they find a treasure in that swamp? Did they find an inviting cabin with a fireplace and food stored up? Maybe some hunter's cabin long forgotten but ready for them? Well, what was it? It wasn't an ancient treasure that they were looking for. It wasn't a cabin. It was a simple compass that was sitting alone on a rock in the middle of nowhere. You see, these boys were on a survival camping experience that was called Hardcore. It was modeled after Outward Bound, which was very popular in the 70s. It focused on one's relationship with God being the ultimate ingredient of not only eternal survival, but thriving eternally. One of the components of Hardcore was a group expedition during which groups of four were given a topographic map, a list of destination points, and a compass. The task? Reach all of the points and return to base camp in three days. Some of the points were were high mountains in the Adirondacks, some were lakes, hidden ponds, streams, just a various um, points, about 70 miles um, in total. The group ran into trouble after bushwhacking up a steep mountain and deciding to reach their next destination by orienteering through a large swamp. Orienteering is when you take a map and a compass and you don't look for trails, you work your way through the swamp, through the, uh, to your point. They became disoriented due to the storm and the floods they were hiking through, only to realize that their one compass that they had as a group needed to orient themselves with their map was left behind on top of the mountain they had scaled hours before. After several hours in the rain, attempting to find a small trail leading to some landmark they could identify on the map, they were hopelessly lost 
miserable, and for various reasons, they were in some real danger, some of the health issues that some of them had. They huddled up, they cried out to God in prayer, and as darkness approached, they decided to find higher ground and hunker down for a cold night. Then one of the young, spot, one of the young men spotted it. A compass. <laughs> it wasn't their compass. They had left their compass up on top of the mountain. The compass had to have been left there by someone long ago, and as they picked it up off the rock, it would, they were filled with joy because the compass still pointed north. It hadn't frozen up, there was oil in it, and it still could sweet, uh, freely swing to point north. God had heard their prayers. Immediately, they started celebrating and they said, let's praise God. We have a compass. This is a miracle. Where did this come from? And I know it's true because I was the lead hiker that day who found that compass. It's a true story. It really is. And it wasn't our compass. And we had never been there before. There was no trail. It must have been some hunter who had traversed the swamp long ago. But it, and it wasn't a coincidence. Has anybody ever found a random compass in the woods before? <laughs> Praise God, and we praise God. He, he rescued us. He rescued us by giving us a compass so that we could orient our map and we could find our way to safety. How about you? Have you experiences in your life like that where you praise God because someone else might say, well, that's a coincidence, or, but you know, you know, people might not believe you, but you know that you know that this was, this was God. This was supernatural. This was something that God did. And the response, praise God, praise him, give him praise, right? And uh, that's what we do here also in our small groups, in our fellowship. Every time I'm here, it's not just what we hear when we're in church service, but when we're having a cup of coffee and I'm talking to one of my sisters or brothers in the Lord, and they're telling me something that, that God did in their life during the week. And what's our response? Praise God. Praise God. Let's look at a, a few scriptures here together. Uh, next slide, guys. So we praise God in obedience to God's word. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, the Apostle Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So what's God's will for your life? That's a big question people struggle with during transition times. And there's a specific will of God for your life. But here's something we could all grab hold of. It's God's will that we praise him. Right? We praise him. How about the next verse? We praise God out of full hearts. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. So then, just as you receive Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. There we have winning souls and building up the body of Christ, right? You receive Christ as Lord, and then you live out your life in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. That's what praise, isn't that a great definition of praise? Overflowing with thankfulness. We thank God for his great salvation. We thank God what we learn in his word, and we thank God for how we do life together. Amen? Third verse. We praise God as a way of life. Psalm 119, 164, the psalmist writes, seven times a day I praise you. We live in Brooklyn, in Borough Park right now, in a wonderful Hasidic and Chinese community. And uh, during COVID, the first, Sabbath, the first Sabbath morning, Saturday morning during COVID, they had shut down the synagogues, even in the Hasidic community, which was unheard of. First time in, in memory for many of the, our, our neighbors, they, they couldn't go uh, to their shul to have their prayer time. What were they doing? They all came out, all the men came out, and in front of their homes, they had their prayer books, and they were rocking, and they were praying. And I thought to myself, wow, I've been isolated in my own home. I'm going to get my Bible. I'm going to go out in front of our house, 364, <laughs> at 964 52nd Street, and I'm going to open up my Bible, and I'm going to pray along with my Jewish neighbors. And I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to thank God for them, and I'm going to praise God that he's going to get us through this. So the psalmist says, seven times a day I praise you. 
What a great way to get through the day, right? When you wake up, when you eat your <laughs> meals, before you go to sleep. If you're not praising God all the time, start by maybe saying, well, seven times a day I could set an alarm and praise God. Every time that alarm goes off, I'm going to say, oh, it's time to praise God. There's got to be something to thank God for, right? We all got something to thank God for. And then Psalm 71, 6. By you I have been sustained from my birth. This is the, some reasons why we praise God. He sustained us. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. The more we know about God and the more we know God, the more our hearts will overflow with thanks to God. And that's the beautiful thing about praise. In closing, I started with a story about that I experienced with some young men. I just want to close with a story from the Bible about a king named Jehoshaphat. Remember that guy, King Jehoshaphat? I love King Jehoshaphat. The story of him in 1 Chronicles chapter 20. Um, what was happening, he was a good king. He was a godly king as he started out as a king. Um, and God blessed the nation very much. But then the enemies around him became envious and jealous around Judah. And they, they formed a coalition to attack um, Israel at that time, or the center of Israel, which was the kingdom of Judah where Jerusalem was. So several nations surrounding Judah formed a coalition. The coalition far outnumbered the people of Judah, and they were going to annihilate the Jewish people. That was their plan. So Jehoshaphat gathered the people together, the men, the women, the children, and the Bible says even the babies, the, the moms came with their babies. They were terrified. This is a, an army that's coming to destroy them. But they were looking to God for their help. And Jehoshaphat, the king, led the people in prayer. What a great thing to have leaders who will lead our communities in prayer, right? And this was part of his prayer. He said, Lord, we are powerless before this great multitude that is coming against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. And then God's response came through a spirit-filled prophet. Chapter 20, verse 17, this was the word of God to the people. You need not fight in this battle. Take your position. Stand and watch the salvation of the Lord in your behalf, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Now, how did they apply the word of God? Listen to how they applied that word that strategy to overcome this, this, this enemy that was so much stronger than they were. Verse 20, they, the people of Judah and Jerusalem, they rose up early in the morning, they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa, and when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and he said, listen to me, Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God and you will endure. Put your trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. As they went out before the army, they said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his faithfulness is everlasting. When they began singing and praising the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. The, those were the enemies, the coalition, who had come against Judah, so they were struck down. How did this happen? The sons of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. They completely destroyed them. And then when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. In other words, God, God turned their enemies against each other, and he saved the people of Judah and Jerusalem. But what was the amazing strategy? Those who were singing, the choir led the army, right? The choir didn't come at the end of the, at the, end of the battle to give praise for the victory. They, they came in the front because they had faith in the word of God. The word of God was true. God was with them, and they were going to win that day. They didn't know how, but they praised God out of faith. Can you praise God with faith this, this morning? Praise God. So... In closing, this was a song from about that same time period, I believe, early 80s. It might have been late 70s. Um, written by Brown, Bannister, and Michael Hudson, made popular by the group The Imperials. 
And these were the lyrics. When you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams and your hopes have been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested schemes and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears, don't let the faith you're standing on seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. There is hope for those who praise him. Praise the Lord for our God inhabits praise. For the change that seem to bind you drop powerless behind you when you praise him. I'm so thankful for this congregation of believers and all who are going to become part of this church in the future. Let's win, build, and praise God together for the salvation of souls, the well-being of Morrisville and Trenton and our communities all around us and through our missionaries around the world, that God might be glorified and we might be filled with praise. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Guys, our last slide there, the reverse team to come on up, if, if you would, please. Um, our, our name may be out there as a brand new name that we're going to try to draw people with, but our mission will stay the same. Method changes, message continues the same. We will win souls, build saints, praise God. Our mission is to grow together as passionate followers of Christ. Read it with me. Growing together as passionate followers of Christ. We take the symbol on the left, which has been a symbol we've used for 32 years. We're going to transfer it to a symbol on the right, which says compass. But you know what? We're still going to direct people to Jesus Christ, and that's what compass is all about. Jim, go ahead and lead us as we uh, let's all stand as we finish out with a, a song of praise. I see the work of your hands, galaxies spinning a heavenly dance, oh God, how much you are so overwhelming. I hear the sound of your voice, all at once it's as gentle and thundering noise, oh God, all that you are. So overwhelming, I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. And God, I've run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. I know this power of your cross, forgiven and free, forever you'll be my God. All that you've done is so You are beautiful, you are beautiful. 
beautiful. God, there is no one more beautiful. You are beautiful. God, you are the most beautiful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. God, there is no one more wonderful. You are wonderful. God, you are the most beautiful. Glorious, you are glorious, oh God, there's no one more glorious, you are glorious, God, you are the most glorious. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. Because of mercy, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. Okay, we welcome you all today, and uh, you that are on Facebook, you can come to our meal virtually and enjoy our hamburgers and our hot dogs. Uh, for you, though, to hear, we're going to go outside. There'll be, uh, the Birkins are actually cooking, but they're way in the back, so you probably won't see them. If you do see them, say thank you. Also to Carissa and those others that have helped. Let's have a word of prayer and bless the food before we go out. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the privilege of serving you here in Morrisville. We ask that our light might shine as best as it can here in this, uh, in this town. Now, as we uh, go out and have some uh, food together, we ask for your blessing over it and over our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a great day. to me.